Hello and welcome back to my analysis of Fazbear Fright. Um, today we're going through Count the Ways, which is the third book in Into the Pit, the last book. Um, apart from this kind of secret at the end, um, which I'll go through in another video. Um, this story is <laughs> pretty crazy, it's really dark. Um, I don't like it as much as the other two, however it is quite a nice story and I think it's got a few lore bits in it as well. Um, once again, um, like the other two, it has quite a slow, it's not really a slow start because it's it's strange. It's not like one continuous timeline, it's going back into the past, then to the present, then to the past, and then, then to the present. So I'm going to tell you the story like that rather than going through it in like timeline order which I thought about doing. Um, but I think it's just easier if I just present it in the way that the book presents it. So let's just begin. Um, we begin with a girl called Millie Fitzsimmons. Um, and basically she wakes in this, um, in this animatronic. I I'll, I'll just say that now. She wakes in an animatronic, a robot, um, and she sees a large pair of terrifying blue eyes rolling backwards looking into the chest chamber. So she's inside of this big chamber, it's like metallic walls and stuff, um, and then she looks up and these eyes that would normally w look that way, like an animatronic, they roll back so that they can see her. It's like a security camera inside a chamber. And she hears a voice, Silly Millie, Chilly Millie, the ice-cold goth girl who's always dreaming of death, Am I right? Um, <laughs> this character isn't supposed to sound like that. This character, spoilers, is in fact Funtime Freddy. This is Funtime Freddy. Um, it, it's revealed later on. I may as well just say it now because it's easier. Um, but this is Funtime Freddy. She's in Funtime Freddy Chess Carity, which is kind of interesting because in the Sister Location Blueprints, we see that Funtime Freddy has a child in his chess cavity. So, um, so there you go, we're in Funtime Freddy's body here. Millie is aware that she's inside of this bear, um, it's revealed that she was the one who went in. Um, let's, let's talk about Millie. So Millie is a goth girl, she's obsessed with death. Um, she thinks of death as this, this kind of peace bringing character that will take her to a better place, you know. She doesn't want to be here anymore. She's very goth, she always wears black, um, and she's addicted to Edgar Allan Poe's stories and poems, um, which are all about death and stuff as well, I'm pretty sure. Um, there's a lot of references to Ed Edgar Allan Poe in this story as well. So, once we are introduced to who Millie is, kind of, and where she is at this present time, um, after that we are taken back in time. So, she was named after her great-grandmother, Millicent Fitzsimmons, and she had a black cat as well, black cat, hmm, uh, named Annabel Lee, after the beautiful dead girl in the Edgar Allan Poe poem, so there's one of the references um, straight off the bat. And she states that she hates her name, um, she thinks that her cat has a better name than her, um, and she talks about how her parents came up with such a ridiculous name. She loved her parents, however, they were ridiculous. They would have many different jobs in one time. They would go from hobby to hobby, from country to country. Um, and she had a choice at one point because she could go to Saudi Arabia with her mum and dad because her, her dad had been offer, offered uh, a teaching job there. Uh, so she could um, go with them for a year and be homeschooled, or she could move in with her grandpa um, for a year. And she chose the grandpa option. Now she lives in this big Victorian grandpa's, grandpa's big Victorian house. Um, she doesn't really seem to fit in there. Um, she can't like get herself to, to rest there properly. Um, and she realises that his, um, her grandpa was a collector. She collect, he collected loads of different scraps, loads of different, I think there were swords on the walls. Um, there was a life-size suit of armour stood guard at one of the front doors. 
she, he, he collected weird things. He wasn't, she wasn't really too sure what he was collecting, but he collected basically everything. <laughs> she tried to make herself feel like home. Um, she hung posters of her favourite singer, Kurt Carrion on the walls, but she, she, as I say, she, she couldn't get the room to match her personality. Now they have a strange interaction at dinner time, you know, she describes the food as being um, food you could eat even though you didn't have teeth, it wasn't the best food, um, and the other thing was she doesn't get much sun and stuff, she even makes her, her skin look more pale, so grandpa says you need the iron, you look so pale. She says it doesn't really matter if she eats or not, she's kind of, she's just gonna die anyway, really. Um, everything in the story is about death, basically. And she says she's not a happy person, which is kind of obvious. Even the poem that she writes, um, Oh death, show me now your ravaged face. Oh death, how I long for your chilly embrace. Oh death, my life is such a misery that only you can set me free. Um, everything about her is just death, death, death. She constantly non-stop talks about it. But I feel sorry for the grandpa in this situation because he's trying, he's so sweet, he's trying to do anything for Millie here, but he, like he even brings her a glass of milk and cookies and she almost rejects them until she realised she couldn't resist the cookies. So now after all of that, after she does her homework, we go back to the present day um, and Basically, Funtime Freddy has said, uh, I can give you options on how you want to die. He's not going to let her escape from this chest cabinet. Chest cabinet? Um, from this... hit from his belly. And he's going to give her a choice of... or multiple choices on how she can die, however she prefers. Um, so there's the lazy choices that we go through, and, and he says the first option is dehydration. Weird part about this story, this is the really fascinating part, is he goes so much into depth about everything. He knows everything about Millie's life, he knows everything about everything, he's just so, he's super smart. Dehydration is one option, the voice said. No water at all and you could start dying in as few as three days or as many as seven. You're young and healthy, so I'll put my money on it taking you a while. Depriving the body of water has fascinating effects, with no fluids coming in to filter and flush. The kidneys shut down and your body starts poisoning itself, making you sicker and sicker. Once those poisons have time to build up, you can suffer total organ failure or a heart attack or stroke. But that's death for you. So glamorous. So romantic. It's so funny because, like, um, Funtime Freddy is so creepy in this story. He makes so many creepy quotes. Um, and he finds death romantic. He says that he's here to make her wishes come true like a genie, except she's the one who's trapped in a bottle. I really like that quote. Um, and then he goes on about starvation. And then at the end of this mini section, Millie's just like, okay, you know what? I don't want to die in here. I'm going to scream and people are going to hear me. And he says, no, this is soundproof. No one's going to hear you. And after a few days, you'll be too weak to scream. So it's one week away from um, winter break, from school, um, and Millie doesn't know why people get excited over the holidays. And then it, it, it says that the family that she was in um, was like a joke in the town because they kept trying to do things and then failing, failing and then trying to do more things. So I'll give you a few examples. They were making candles and selling them at the farmer's market, but it wouldn't work. After six months, they sold yarn and knitting supplies. Um, then they had a food truck. A lot of things, really. The story drags on a lot. Um, it goes on about her being a social outcast. Um, she had a best friend um, from elementary school, Hannah, who eventually, in middle school, went and sat with the popular group. Um, she realised she needed to be soci socially acceptable and Millie had basically no friends. But that doesn't really go anywhere, um, Hannah isn't really mentioned anymore, and I do want to point out that um, in all three stories, um, they all have a best friend, or all had a best friend, it's kind of weird. Well, not weird, but like, it, it was always something that was pointed out, you know? Now, one day, Millie was sat alone, um, eating lunch, 
and she was reading Tales of Mystery and Imagination. I looked that up, it is an Edgar Allan Poe book. And then this guy comes up to her and asks her if he can sit with her. And this is a really nice part. Um, his name is Dylan, uh, and he is new to the school. And he's trying to know, uh, know a few people, and then they bond over Edgar Allan Poe and other goth stories. He said he likes H.P. Lovecraft, and he suggested it to her. Uh, and they have a really nice conversation, which kind of changes Millie's perception on the world a little bit. Um, she sees all of these poems and stories, they are all about, like, love this entire time. Um, and it's kind of, it's nice to see the, ch the sudden change in Millie. Like, she starts complimenting Dylan, and then she starts complimenting um, her grandpa and having banter with him. Then we go back to Funtime Freddy. See, I thought about freezing you to death, too. Um, that was one, uh, again, a lot of information. There is one thing to point out here. It's something that I do. Um, I sat in a salvage yard for ages before your grandpa found me and brought me here where I've been just sitting. I bored out my skull. And what he's saying is he's so bored, he just wants to kill people. Um, very creepy. The whole time Millie's like, why are you doing this? Why Why do you want to kill me? Um, I don't want to die. And he's like, well, I want to kill you, and you want to die. So, good trade, right? <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he's so creepy. Um, and when Millie says that she wants to, she doesn't want to die, um, Funtime Freddy just laughs and his whole body shakes, it's, qu it's quite comedic actually, quite like it. Millie wasn't really thinking about death anymore, she was just thinking of Dylan, um, and she thinks that, well, she likes him, of course. Uh, and then we just suddenly go back to f uh, Funtime Freddy, that it's a lot of conversion, I, I'm not sure if I like the layout of the story, but I think it's probably better than past life, suddenly we're in a fun time Freddy, you know what I mean? I like the non-linearity, that, that's, that's a cool word, non-linearity, that's a new word that I just thought of. Um, fun time Freddy, the first thing he says is, silly Millie, for someone who doesn't want to die, you sure spend a lot of time talking about it, uh, and, and so he's overheard things, and as I say, he knows like, an exceptionally large amount of things about Millie, and it's really interesting. And he goes on about how Dracula was called Vlad Dracula, but he's better known by his nickname, Vlad the Impaler. Um, again, he knows so much. It's literally, it, this part of the book is like I'm reading a Wikipedia article. Um, and then it said, she wanted her grandpa. So it's almost like, um, her opinions have changed now that she's in, like, her last minutes of death, possibly. So Millie obviously wants to impress Dylan the next day at school, and so she she wears some nice things, and then Dylan comes by at lunch, uh, and he says, I've bought you something, and it's actually an old book. Now the book is about, H it's, it's a H.P. Lovecraft book, it's The Call of Cthulhu and Other Stories. In her experience, boys weren't usually like this. And even this event changed her later. Um, it's, it said instead of googling poems about death, she was googling poems about love. Um, and she read the full book, um, and then and later on she goes to the library and tries to find another book. Before that though, um, Funtime Freddy says about electrocution, um, he says a few puns about electrocution, um, and then, on Saturday afternoon, um, she went down to the public library, and she looked for H.P. Lovecraft on the shelves, but there was nothing. And then, she sees Dylan at the library again, and then he picks out, um, The Lottery and Other Stories by Shirley Jackson. They just sat in silence and started reading, and she found it quite nice, she found it very nice. They even went for, for a cup of tea next door at You and Me Coffee and Tea. I like that name, I don't know why. And she, she really just felt good at this moment. Um, she, like, her life was at a big high. She's having a good weekend. One day when she gets home from school, um, Grandpa is all dressed up and, and she's like, Grandpa, why are you dressed up? Um, well, it's because it's, it's like the Christmas fair at school. 
Um, and so they go, even though Millie doesn't really want to. And she found it cute how excited Grandpa was to go. Um, he was talking with his other colleague, his old colleagues. She was looking for Dylan. That's one of the reasons why she went. And she didn't find him in the way she wanted to. Dylan was standing in front of a booth selling reindeer Christmas ornaments made out of candy canes. But he wasn't alone. He was with Brooke Harrison, a blandly pretty blonde girl who was in Millie's US government class. Dylan and Brooke were holding hands and laughing about some private joke in a very couplish way. So then Millie just leaves, like she gets Grandpa and she just scoots out. <laughs> She yeets herself out of the, the school fair and she just couldn't stop crying. She was just crying non-stop and she, it, this, it was like an all-time high to an all-time low. So yeah, she, she was really on a low here. This is probably the lowest point of her life and she said that she wasn't afraid of death. Right now, death felt like her best friend. Then Funtime Freddy goes on about boiling and Henry VIII. How the hell does he know about Henry VIII? <laughs> now, when they go back to school the next day or whatever, um, he, Dylan comes to sit by her at lunch again. Um, and he was really casual. He was like, hey, Millie, how are you doing? And then she gets really angry because she was like, she, she was mad because she thought Dylan was pretending like nothing was happening and that she was his boyfriend. Then a look of, da of realization dawned on his face. Wait, Millie, did you think you and I, me and I, sorry, do you think you and I were dating? Um, and it's like, oh, friend zoned right there. And then she goes on about how she doesn't approve of Brooke, and it's it's kind of mean of her, but I get it, kind of. And then um, he stands up and says, I think this conversation is over. And that's, that's it. <laughs> um, they're not friends anymore. He goes and sits with loads of nerds on, on like a table that plays like um, Dungeons and Dragons or something, I don't know. And then winter holidays approached and Millie got even dimmer because she, she hates Christmas. She doesn't like the winter holidays. She says winter was the season of death. Um, Grandpa's like, why are you not celebrating Christmas? Christmas is the time to be happy with family. Um, and she doesn't like it. She, she doesn't like all the decorations and the songs and the, yeah, everything like that. She doesn't even like Skyping her parents because she's so mad that they've, they've just kind of like abandoned her. And Grandpa goes on a rant, he's so angry, he's just like, Are you serious? Like, you shouldn't have even, you shouldn't have chosen to come here, you should have chosen to go with them for a year. Um, I feel really sorry for Grandpa in the story, because he does so much to treat her like a child, but she just, she's having none of it. Then, uh, Funtime Freddy goes on about decapitation, um, he said it like it was a happy word. Um, a few more puns later, she, she realised how weak she was um, and she really wanted someone to come and save her. This was a time when she just really wanted her parents, you know, um, but she was like, my parents are so unable to help me right now, they're so far away. It's really tragic, like, sometimes in the story I felt sorry for Millie, other times, no, hell no, um, but she, she just wanted to be safe whatever it took. She said she would even put on a Christmas jumper to be safe right now. Um, and then here comes the day. Here comes the day where things happen. Um, it's Christmas Eve. Millie's aunt and uncle and cousins have come round uh, and they're all celebrating Christmas. They're all playing games. Uh, they're all opening presents and stuff like that. Uh, and a Christmas dinner, of course. Um, and the cousins find Millie a little bit weird. They're like, why, why is she weird? <laughs> why is she a nonce? And she's just so, she's so down all the time. It's always about death. Um, she says that drinking eggnog is like drinking phlegm. <laughs> um, and then she says she's going for a walk. One, this is like, I'm, I want to cry saying this. Um, but Grandpa called for her to remember her coat, but she ignored him. It's like kind of chills right there. Kind of like, Oh, I really I I love the grandpa in this story. She hates Christmas so much. She goes around the block, um, and then she's really cold. Uh, so she should have taken the jacket. If she took the jacket, none of this would have happened. Okay, here's the point. 
She goes into her grandpa's workshop. She goes in the workshop and of course it's filled of scraps and stuff. Uh, there were so many, there were mechanical toys, there was a metal bank with a clown that flipped coins into its mouth. There were grinning monkey dolls um, that clang symbols together, you know, like the one from Toy Story. Um, and she was confused on why Grandpa wanted all, all of that stuff and what his plan was with it. Um, then, <laughs> the strangest item among many was tucked into one corner of the workshop. It was some kind of mechanical bear with a bow tie, top hat and a creepy blank grin. It looked like it had once been white and pink, but years of neglect had left it a dingy grey. It was big, big enough for a person to climb into its body cavity. Like in those science fiction movies where people drove giant robots. Um, apparently it was from an old kids attraction that featured creepy looking animatronics. Um, obviously it's from, it's Funtime Freddy. Um, I don't know why it took so long to introduce Funtime Freddy, like, I, I'm pretty sure anybody reading this story right away would know it's Funtime Freddy. Um, but there's confirmation right there that it is, in fact, Funtime Freddy. Now, she was in the workshop and the, the small children, the cousins, were outside and she was like, I can't let them see me because they will tell their parents and then I'll have to go into the living room with all with the family, sit with them and have Christmas with them um, as a punishment. And so she wanted to hide and she saw the bear as a potential solution. So she opened the door to the mechanical bear's body cavity, crawled inside and shut the door behind her. Darkness enveloped her. It was so much better than those annoyingly twinkly lights and gar and get and garish bright Christmas sweaters. She thought it was perfect, um, it was kind of perfect for a second because she knew no one would find her, but she was trapped in there. Now, when it was time for Christmas dinner, Grandpa called everybody in, um, and she was like, where's Millie? Oh, it's fine, she'll come in by herself. She's, she's one of those people, you know, um, and they wait for her. Well, they don't wait for her, they, they continue having dinner, but they're worried about her, you know? And it, this is the saddest part, I think. Now, Millie comes up with a plan. We're back to the present now. Millie has a plan. Um, she's gonna find some sort of sheet of metal and use it as like a crowbar to open the the, the chest and then escape. Um, it's quite hard though. Um, and she chooses decapitation. She's trying to breathe and she's kind of having a lot of regrets about her life, which again is very sad. Um, and she said if she ever saw Dylan again she would really apologise for what she said about Brooke and stuff. Um, and then Funtime Freddy is like, okay, here's, here's your last message. You've been rude and quick to anger. You've rushed to the judgement of others. You've been uns insufficiently grateful to those who have shown you nothing but love and kindness. Um, one time Freddy went, I will now do a countdown in French before releasing the blade. Un, deux, trois. Quick as a shot, the blade sliced through the chamber. Then it goes to, to the other part of the scene right now. We're, we're still in the present, but it's like in the house, not the garage. Um, they're all having dinner. Um, the auntie's like, should we be waiting for Millie? And then <laughs> the uncle says, she's not celebrating Christmas, remember? Why should we wait for her if she's decided to be a brat? And then Grandpa tried to talk them out of it. She's not a bad kid, she's just at a difficult age. And he crouched under the Christmas tree and arranged all of her presents in a big pile so that they'd be there for when she came back. And that was the last line. Um... Why do I have chills? It's not that chilling. Um, not that mind-blowing of a story, but it's still creepy, you know? It's very, it's a very dark story. Kind of sensitive as well. Um, I know when reading this, I was like, oh, I, I wish Millie would just change. You know, I, I felt a little bit of hope when she met Dylan, but it, uh, it all backfired. Um, 
What do I think of this story? Really good. Um, again, as I say, not as good as the others. Um, what do I think is happening in this story? I think everything that is happening is just on the tin. I don't know how to explain how Funtime Freddy knows so much. Obviously he's been active in that garage for a long time and he's heard people um, talking in the kitchen or whatever. Um, but still, like, he knows things about Henry VIII and, like, the French Revolution. I don't know how. It's, it's a very strange detail to put in there. But he's so creepy, as well as so funny, and he has such a light tone in this story to such a dark toned um, words. So I really I do like this story. I don't know how it's going to help out with the law. Again, I need to think about it even more. The worst part about this story is that there's a cliffhanger, and I don't like cliffhangers. Um, we don't know if Minnie dies. I'm pretty certain she does unless there's like a sequel to this story and I don't see why there would be I don't know how Scott would do that but I'm pretty sure Millie dies it was a cliffhanger we don't know if Millie died or not um, but it was kind of a depressing story um, and very dark at the same time so thank you for watching that almost concludes my Fazbear Frights um, like first book um, there is one more story, and I will do a video on that. Uh, it should be out either later or the next day. Um, and it's about this mysterious creature called the Stitch Wraith. Um, it's a very, it's an extremely short story compared to these short stories, but it's very significant if you want to get more lore out of these stories. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you then. Goodbye.